Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, it is after little man's bedtime and people have been asking for updates and it has been a little bit, I apologize, and I'll tell you why and I'll give you quick updates. So here is the engine in the car that's the, the mystery motor that's already blown up. Mark and I, at the end of that, were like, Let's just get these motor mounts in and working and see if they do work, see if we're going to use them and just check the intake. And I'm sure that th this uh, pinch weld on the firewall stuck out an incredible amount. So I'm like, let's nip this quick and throw that on. Ugh. Can I get this guy back? Anyway, that fits. It's too hard for me to do that and not spill everything all over. I'm giving up. So. That's slug number two, that's slug number one. This, I'm just exchanging this guy for this guy at the junkyard, basically. So I'm gonna take this one apart, make sure everything's good, and use whatever I need to off of this. If I have to, I'm gonna take the intake and the ex some of the accessory stuff and get this guy rolling. And we will tear into this guy and gap the rings also, normally. I don't touch these things, as most of you know already. Normally I don't open them up at all, but since we are going for a fairly high amount of horsepower, I'm going to open it up and open the rings. So, I've said it a few times where if your horsepower goal is like that 5-600 area, and if you're going to have ethanol, you can probably go. I've seen a lot of completely untouched cars go 6, 7, 8, 900. Uh, you know, upper, with E85, the ring doesn't expand as much. It keeps the cylinder cool. That's what I think anyway. Professional people might argue with me on that. But it's also safer. The octane's higher. Anyway, I got a rad used. One of the used 65 Mustang rads. So probably going to end up using that. Might not use a full-size one. It's all up in the air right now. So yes, this is the new boy. It looks nice and filthy, like nothing has happened to it. All I gotta do is check and make sure that the bearings and the timing chain and everything else is stock. So we'll tear into this guy and look at these nice rusty head bolts. This is a, this is a clear indicator of some age and some marinating and all of the stuff uh, untouched. That's what we're looking for. Untouched motors are us. Look at the grime. Oh man, this is going to be a good engine. That's what I tell you. Oh, I'm excited. So, great 62 heads, four point great, all that great stuff. So we'll dig into this on video again and see if we find any surprises. Uh, I genuinely hope we don't find surprises. What I like is a completely boring stock engine if you hadn't figured that out by now. I like just it to be junk and used because those are the most reliable. What I always like to say is, man, if this thing ran for 300,000 miles, what are you going to do in there to make it run better by replacing it with some... Uh, I like what Jay from Real Street Performance says. He says, new. New means never, ever worked. And it doesn't necessarily mean bad or good. But if the engine was already running and you didn't do anything, you have a running engine. If your engine was running and you did bearings, cam bearings, oil pump, you're leaving yourself open to possibilities of bad brand new parts that don't have a clear working history. It's like having employees without a background check. But I hope this guy works out, right? Anyway, that's where we're at. So very soon, I'll throw this video up and we'll dig into this guy, but a lot of you were asking about updates. I think a lot of people were asking about the steam vents. This engine has the four port steam vent. Like I said, I've done tests where we've eliminated them completely, and we have done tests where the newer engines are the front only, and I see no difference. I, man, I really fail to see how that's gonna blow your engine. People are like, oh, you gotta have all four, it's gonna blow. I've done a few with 800 plus horsepower on pump and meth with all four blocked. And basically what I usually do is whatever it comes with, I use. Some people are like, oh man, you're using all four steam vents. That's how they're staying alive. Not really. That's what I got with the engine and it was easier to bolt all that stuff back on. 
Does that make sense? <laughs> a lot of times the answer is simpler than you would expect. So that's it. I just bolt it right back on. Man, this thing's nice and dirty. It's going to be a good engine. It has just grime everywhere. And that is the sign of a champion, my friends. So there is the quick update. Engine number one and two. Basically, what took a long time was when I found out this one was bad, I also realized I had... I had a bunch of money in the budget to play with. I had like 1500 bucks and I wanted to save $500 for like oops money. Cause I'm at like 7,500 on paper and the parts are pretty much rolling in. So I'm at approximately 7,500 bucks. Uh, believe it or not, I'm decent at budgeting these things after I've done a hundred or more of these builds by myself. So I'm like, at this point, this motor is no good. What I want to do is call a bunch of my friends quick and see if I can get a handle on an LY6, which is like factory race engine. It's like the best shit you can get, in my opinion, because if you get a 5.3, it's a displacement on demand engine. Uh, you can get a newer 4.8, but the newer 4.8, it, it's, it's, it's small. It's a small displacement engine. So if you want to get totally nuts right away and you want to get the most engine race engine for your dollar and you want to make 1500 flywheel horsepower without doing anything the ly6 is the king shit for that there's nothing better in my opinion so you grab that thing and you toss it in and basically we could pin the other turbo we, i have a s475 from Varen. it's a 75 cast 88 turbine t6 we could just put no wastegate on the car and whatever it makes is not going to blow the engine the turbo simply is not big enough so that would be cool but at the same time, I scrambled for a couple days and I was like, let's just jam an LY6 in. And then when we're done pinning that turbo and we go eights, let's go straight for the Pro Mod turbo on the LY6. And we won't have to change anything. Just bolt a big ass turbo on, maybe some cold side and downpipe modifications. But I was like, okay, we're, you know, getting a little crazy. Let's try to keep the budget down still and just... the I found a couple LY6s for like $1,300 or $1,500, but it, that's right at my $8,800 limit and it leaves no error at all and it throws the project in the trash if I have to spend 150 bucks on stuff so I didn't want to run into that and also if I got an LY6 for cheaper than that I started to think it would be unfair it'd be a little bit of gaming if, if someone just gives me a good price on one or if I find one fairly cheap the average price for an LY6 is what I was getting, $1,300, $1,500. Some are way more than that if you get it from a recycler and it's a new engine with a lot of... If it's like a fairly new one, like a 15 with 80,000 miles, you're going to spend like four grand. It's going to cost you money. And I was like, LY6 is unrealistic for this budget. Let's go right back to swapping this one out for another junkyard Gen 3 4.8. Let's show people what... You know, I. it's funny because... I just buy what's cheap. It doesn't necessarily mean anything is good or bad. I'm just going to use whatever's most cost effective and show people that it doesn't really matter. So I would like other people to take that same <laughs> ideal from that. Just because something's more desirable doesn't mean it's going to stop you from making five, six, seven hundred horsepower if you set everything up correctly and you don't self-sabotage. So that's the plan we're going to use the gen 3 intake and try to keep the truck rails and return system everything on there like normal and i'm going to stage my pumps and whatever the fuel pressure is with the 450 it is and we'll work around that stuff that's all budget constraint stuff eventually i'd like to see a set of rails on the truck intake because i feel like there's a limit around 800 a thousand horsepower so when we go for the big stuff, I think we're going to need to change it. I don't know if anybody has scientifically ran out, pushed to the point of running out of rails. I know the rails necessarily are not a restriction because the rails are huge. The rails are huge on this intake. Look at them. They're massive. The issue is the feed and return are only so big and the internal size of the regulator is only so big. So we're going to cross that bridge when we get to it. What I'd like to do is make the power and run the pass on the all gen 3 intake and i have the gen 4 bread box trailblazer nmbs all of the above intake i have that i want to throw that on and see the gains and run it like that too 
and then start snowballing parts at this thing and see what happens. And I think I've talked about this a few times with Mark, and he thinks it would be a cool idea also. If this 4.8 survives and it goes high 8s, I think we're going to pull it out and do pistons and rods. Because I don't really know anybody that does that, I think it would be neat to explore. As long as the 4.8 has a shorter crank and longer rods. So if the longer rods are much more expensive than like the regular crank and rod size connecting rod, it might not be worth it. But if it's marginal or the same cost, which I believe they're probably the same cost, uh, I think it would be really cool to take the $200 engine and put pistons and rods in it just for fun because it's not really going off of a budget at that point, even though we're going to monitor it, update it, and let everybody know. I think it would be just interesting to do because not many people do it. And then start stepping up the turbos. I'd like to go straight to the turbo that I thought about getting, maybe the billet 80 or going... I mean, it would be neat to do a pro mod. And then I even talked about... I thought it would be neat to stroke this motor, do a four inch stroke with the small bore, and it would essentially make it like a, a 360. It's, it's just the same thing as like a stroking the 5.3. But then uh, the stroker motors put them at a funny rod angle. So a bunch of it's up in the air, but I think pistons and rods in the 4.8 would be cool as long as it's not economically retarded. So that's, that's all of my ideas in my head for right now. That's what we were kicking around as soon as this one seemed crappy. We're like, man, we're doing good on budget. Uh, Mark and I were all amped up. We're like, let's just go get an LY6 and pin the turbo and come out swinging. And then uh, we could not get an LY6 fast enough. And then reasoning started to fall on us. And we're like, that's going to eat a lot of budget. And then there's going to be absolutely no room. And part of what I like to do is budget and have room. Because people are like, oh, you know how it goes. I just spent too much. And I'm like, no, I, I don't know how that goes. I'm, I'm always really good with my budget, so I don't understand why you're having issues or why you can't find your 10 millimeter. Those are problems I don't have. I'm sorry, I can't identify with you. So, I hope you got the gist of all this. That's the update for now. We're gonna tear into this guy probably tomorrow, tear it down and mess around with it, and we'll do that on camera, and hopefully it looks filthy and untouched. And that's the magic we'll share with you guys. So if you have any more questions that I didn't answer, let me know. Otherwise, it'll come in uh, future updates as we do some teardowns and everything else. So thank you very much. Have a good night.